Start. Let's continue on with lesson three. Oh, this is. All right. So we are going to talk about an equation. So. Um, let me give you a good definition of an equation. An equation is basically a statement with an equal sign in it, okay? Anything with an equal sign in it. So if I say this chair is, what color is that chair? Purple? Red. It's definitely not red. Technically brown. Purpley, maroon, whatever. This, that, that's an equation because I have the word is in it. All right, Mr. Flack is awesome. Okay, that's an equation. I didn't say it was a true equation. You can still have an equation, it could be false. Does five equal three? But if I say five equals three, that's an equation, but it's not a true equation. It's still an equation because it has an equal sign in it. Okay, even though it's a lie. Okay, so an equation is basically a statement that two quantities are equal. Okay, so three plus four equals seven. That's an equation. Or you could say five plus A equals nine. Is that an equation? Sure. Now it's what we call a conditional equation because we don't know if this is true yet. But if a certain condition is met, then it, we can say it's true. What does the condition have to be for this to be an e equal, for an equation? Yes. Um, a needs to equal four. Yeah, if. A equals four, then this is true, okay? But it's still an equation no matter what. We just have a different name for this. It's called a conditional equation. The condition is if A equals four, then it's a true equation, okay? If it equals anything else, it's still an equation, but we call it a false equation. If A is three, it's still an equation, but it's a false equation, okay? So how would you, figure out what that is. Well, I think maybe by trial and error, but what's a good way to figure out what A has to be? Yes. Nine minus five. Yeah, you just subtract. Nine minus five equals four. So A has to equal four, okay? So basically what we're doing is we're using the inverse operations, inverse operations to figure out the missing number. Inverse operation of addition is what? Subtraction. Subtraction. Okay, now, um, so we're just going to invert it. We're going to go backwards. Uh, 9 minus 5 equals A, right? So A has to be 4. Okay, what about this? This Let's get a little bit more complicated. Let's say that I've got this equation, three plus four plus n plus seven plus eight equals 40. You guys know how to figure out what n is? I see you calculating. Do you know what it is? 18. Okay, how'd you get 18? All right, you add them all together, and then you subtract from 40, right? Because all of it has to eat, add up to 40. So here's how I would add this. I like to find 10s. So there's, a, there's 10 plus 12, so that's 22, right? So I got 22 plus n equals 40. So then how do I figure it out from here? Right, we subtract, we invert it and do the opposite operation. So 40 
minus 22 equals n, so n equals 18. Good job. All right? So most of the time, we can just go backwards. We can just do the opposite operation. Why do I say most of the time? Do you know? I might. Okay. Um, I don't. Okay, so like if you're missing something in an addition problem, here's the deal. You can always subtract the sum minus whatever you have left to figure out the missing add end, right? In a subtraction problem, it depends. Well, let's start with an easy one. N minus three equals two. How do you figure out what N is? Well, you probably know it without even doing any math, right? But how would you figure it out if these were more complicated numbers? Yeah. Two plus three. Two plus three, right? So N equals two plus three, which is five. Okay, good. Now, what I would do is I would just make sure that makes sense. Is five minus three, two? Yes, okay. What about this problem? Five minus X equals two. How do you find X? Do you just do the opposite of subtraction? Do you add? What happens if you add? X equals five plus two. Is that seven? Is the answer seven? No, that doesn't sound right. Okay, so this is where that different, remember there's a different word, minuend minus subtrahend. That's why there's different words because it depends on which one you're missing. If you're missing the minuend, then you can just go backwards and, and add. But look what you have to do here. How do you get, you know this is three, right? Because five minus three is two. How do you get to three from five and two? What do you do? Five minus two. Yeah, it's another subtraction problem. So in addition, if you're missing an add-in, you can always subtract. But in subtraction, it depends on which one you're missing. Okay, isn't that confusing? Well, if you forget, you can always try both. Like we tried seven, and then what do we do? We take that seven and we put it back in. Uh-oh, five minus seven equals two. That doesn't make sense. So we did something wrong, so then we, okay, so if it's not, Adding to get the missing number it must be subtraction. So you're either going to add or subtract to find the missing number here. If you don't remember which one is which, just try both and see which one makes sense. Okay? You can always put an easy problem on the board, like 5 minus 3 equals 2. And if you get more complicated problems, all right, we're, we're missing that second number. So how do you get that? Oh, it's another subtraction problem. Oh, we're missing the first number. How do you get back to five? Oh, you just add it. Okay, so you can always throw an easy problem on the board and just go by, the, use that for reference. Or you could just try both, plug them in and see which one works, okay? So this one is another subtraction problem. So another subtraction problem. So five minus two equals three. So that's how you get to X. Okay, so this is, this is one of those things that's hard to remember, but honestly, you don't have to remember it because you can just try both and see which one works. Okay, use your gut. And after a while, you're not gonna have to remember it or try both because you're, uh, it's gonna come naturally. It's gonna become more of a muscle memory thing. Oh, I'm missing that second number, so I have to subtract. I got it. Okay, any questions on that? Does that seem weird? You're like, what you, why, why is that? Why is it two different ways to get a, no, it's not two different ways. It's just dependent on which one you're missing. With addition, it doesn't matter. Okay, yes? Um, does it really matter what letter they put in? No, it doesn't matter what letter. So letter means it's unknown. Okay, so you have to solve for the unknown. You have to figure out what that unknown is, okay? Um, and this is another reason why addition and multiplication are awesome, but subtraction and division are dumb, okay? Whenever you're dealing with subtraction and division, there's dumb little rules that you have to follow, okay? Now eventually, and especially now when we get to algebra and do algebraic things, then we kind of turn all the subtraction into addition anyway and all the, or all the division into multiplication. Do you guys know how to... Divide fractions. 
You guys remember how to divide fractions? You guys learned that yet? What do you do? I've done it a long time. Yeah. I, yeah. Do you remember? Uh, you put the like, top number in the box and then the other number outside the box. Yeah. I mean, if you're, if you're dividing a fraction like an act, that's a division problem written as a fraction, yeah. But when you divide two fractions, like three-fourths divided by two-thirds, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? You could do that as well. That works too. What? What's the other way? Didn't you have to like um, inverse one of them? Yep. Multiply? Yep. You invert the second fraction. You flip it. We have a nice little saying: "Copy dot flop." Have you guys heard that before? Well, we'll we'll talk about that. So basically, what do you end up doing when you're dividing? You're multiplying. Okay. So you can turn any division problem into a multiplication problem. You can turn any subtraction problem into an addition problem, okay? And sometimes that's easier to do it. Sometimes it's easier just to leave it as subtraction. Five minus three is two. I'm not gonna say five plus negative three to get to two. I, I, it's easier for me to just subtract. But there's weird stipulations and rules that come with subtraction that you don't have to deal with when you're at adding. Same thing with division, okay? So um, that's probably a good thing to remember. When you get to subtraction and division, just think in the back of your head, all right, Mr. Flax said this is dumb. So I have to remember there's weird things that I don't want to deal with, okay? This is one of them. You have to remember two things, but when you're missing an, uh, one of the add-ins in an addition problem, you just have to remember, just subtract. But over here, you have to remember two things. That's kind of annoying, isn't it? All right, well, let's move on from the annoying. Okay, so... This is when you're missing parts of an addition problem and parts of a subtraction problem. What are we going to talk about next? Anyone, can anyone guess? Yeah. So what happens when we're missing something in a factor in a multiplication problem? Okay, so for example, three times f equals six. Well, you guys can probably figure that out in your head, but how do you get that f? Yes. Six divided by three. Yeah, you take the answer, product, divided by three. Okay, so six divided by three equals two. All right, well, what if we're missing the second one? Let's try that. Um, let's say it's b times 4 equals 12. Well, how do you figure out what b is? Yes, great. 12 divided by 4? Yeah, that's also a division problem. So, so far, we just have one thing we have to remember when we're missing something in a multiplication problem. You just divide. You just do the opposite, okay? Do you think it's going to be that case with division? No. Let's try some division here. So A divided by 3 equals 15. Can anyone tell me if, as fast as they can what A is? What is it? See, that's what everyone says, two people. What's the answer? 45. 45. See what you did? You saw 3, you saw 15, you saw this division symbol, and you're like, oh, 15 divided by 3 is 5. Well, that's not what the problem says. What number divided by 3 equals 15? So in this case, how do you figure out what A is? Do you divide or multiply? Multiply. multiply. So when you're missing this number, you're going to multiply the, your answer, 15 times 3, to get 45. Plug it in. Is 45 cut into 3 equal parts equal to 15? Yeah. Is 5 cut into 3 equal parts equal to 15? No. So do it. Just divide it and then plug it in and see if it makes sense. Because if it doesn't, oh, I was supposed to multiply, not divide. Okay? But your brain is going to get tired of correcting you. So your brain is going to say, no, we're going to skip that process and we're going to go right to the right answer. Let's try the right answer first. Okay? So this is how your brain learns. Your brain only learns when you screw it up. Okay? 
When you make that mistake too many times, your brain's gonna say, I'm tired of this. Let's just get the right answer the first time. Yes, sir. Yep. Okay, so what do you think is gonna happen when we're missing the second part? What's 64 divided by B equals four? How do you find B? Well, you have two options. You're either gonna multiply or divide. Which one do you think it's gonna be? Yep, Grace? Divide. Yeah, if you multiply, that's like what, 256? 64 divided by 256, is that four? No. So this one is gonna be another division problem. 64 divided by four, which is 16. Okay, so in division, it depends on which one you're missing. If you're missing the first one, which is called the what again? You guys remember what that's called? Divisor? So that's the second one. So this is the divisor. Yeah, All right, so the dividend divided by the divisor equals the what? Quotient. Equals the quotient. So if you're missing the dividend, well, just go backwards. Quotient times divisor equals dividend. Okay, if you're missing the divisor, then it's another division problem. Dividend divided by quotient equals that missing divisor. Okay? Remember, you don't have to remember that. So you can just try it and let your brain work it out because eventually your brain's gonna get tired of this and just do it right the first time, okay? And it's gonna remember whether you want it to or not. Like you, you didn't have to teach yourself how to walk. Your brain just figured it out because you did it so many times and fell so many times. Now you guys are like professional walkers. Like you. <laughs> well, we have our moments, but you don't really have to remind yourself how to walk. All right, left, right, right. Oh, shoot. It's right and then left. No, it does that automatic. That's called muscle memory. You don't have to tell yourself how to breathe. You inhale, and if you think about it too much, you're going to hyperventilate. But So don't try that. But these are parts that your brain does all the heavy lifting and it figures it out for you so you don't have to do it. But the only way you learn is you've taken a lot of breaths and you've taken a lot of steps. So it's this repetition. And that's why uh, like you're doing the same math problem sometimes 30 times, right? In these Saxon problems. But that repetition helps you know how to do it naturally. It helps you learn this in your muscle memory. Okay? Any questions so far? All right. So remember, addition, when you're missing something, it's always subtraction to figure out that missing add end. Multiplication, when you're missing a factor, it's always division. Okay? But when you're missing something in a subtraction problem or a division problem, that's when you have to slow down and say, okay, I want to make sure I do this right. But even if I do it wrong, I'm going to let myself do it wrong and then figure out this. So if when you're missing something, a subtraction problem, you're either going to add or subtract, right? So you can either try to figure it out before you do it or just go for it and let your brain do the heavy lifting. Okay. Same thing with division. So if you're missing something in a division problem, you're either going to multiply or divide. You're never going to add or subtract. Those aren't related. Okay. But if you're missing something in a division problem, you're either going to multiply or divide. So you have to decide either beforehand or just work out both and see what works. Okay? Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flack. Black math!